evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to another Wimbledon School of English webinar. Lovely to see you all. It's been quite a long time since we had one of our webinars. Uh, I'm very happy today because it's lovely, sunny weather for the first time for ages in the UK. So what better time to think about your summer holiday for the children? We know that uh, many of you and many parents have been having a very difficult time over the last year and a half with everybody enclosed together in a small space. So we think the children and the parents will both be absolutely delighted to have the opportunity to spend some time away, outside, doing activities, exploring, and of course, improving their English. So with us today to tell you a little bit more about our plans for this summer are me, I'm Jane Lancaster. I'm the uh, Managing Director. I almost forgot who I was there. I'm the Managing Director of Wimbledon School of English. Adam Matthews, who's our Juniors Organiser and Manager. June Dunn, who's our Sales Manager. And David Samperi from France Long, who can answer all your questions about what's happening in France at the moment and tell you from personal experience about how wonderful Biarritz is. So we will start off by having a look at the program in Biarritz. And I have to say that everybody here at Wimbledon is very, very excited about this one. Uh, and we are all fighting over who can go over there and help David and his wonderful team uh, work on running the English in France courses. So, uh, English in France, it's Wimbledon School of English, as you know it, Wimbledon School of English Teachers, Wimbledon School of English Systems, Wimbledon School of Method, English Methods, transported to one of France's top seaside resorts. What could be better? By the sea, fresh air, sunshine, a lot of amazing activities, uh, and the WSC excellence in teaching and learning. So what we have here is uh, the dates, the 26th of June to the 14th of August, arrivals on the Saturday and departures on the Saturday, ages from 14 to 17, levels A2 to C2. So as always at WSE, we do teach up to very high levels of English language. So remember, Parents who have children studying at international schools may think that their children have nothing more to learn, but we find they always do have more to learn. We can always teach them. We've even had uh, a few native speaker English uh, dual nationality children on our summer camps, and they've always learned and they've always enjoyed. Uh, and there is a residential and a day camp option. The reason we have both options is, first of all, residential in a wonderful school that David will tell you a little bit more about in a minute. But also the day camp, we thought what a great opportunity. Family holiday by the sea. Parents can relax in the daytime, have fun, go sightseeing, do activities together. Their children can be looked after by us, have fun, do activities and learn English. And then the whole family can come together in the evening. So a fabulous holiday for the children and the parents with the residential and the daycare options. So the time that you can spend with us, well, up to seven weeks. Wow, that would be brilliant, a seven week holiday. I would love that. So from two to seven weeks residential and from one to seven weeks in the day camp. And we've got two great programs for you. So we have the English and surfing program and we have the English and Sports Activities Programme. So English and Surfing, that um, is English language in the morning and surfing with qualified surfing instructors in the afternoon. I'm sure you all know that Biarritz is famous for its great surfing uh, and its great waves and English in, uh, English in France. France Long have been running surfing programs in Biarritz for many years. So they are very, very experienced. And otherwise for children that don't really fancy surfing, but who doesn't fancy surfing? That, that I think would be strange, but there might be some that don't want to do surfing. Then we have English 
and sports activities, all sorts of different activities, including, for example, uh, sea kayaking uh, and the special beer ritz. Um, there's a special sport that David will tell you a little bit more about that the children will do hiking, exploring the local region, lots of different water sports activities, fly, fish, fly fishing, <laughs> rafting, adventure, uh, lots of really, really exciting things for the children to do. So we think this is a great program. And I'm going to hand over to David now to tell you just a little bit more about Beer Ritz, about the location, about what's great about Beer Ritz. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Enchanté to be here with you, Jane, and all the team to introduce this, this new project for this special year of 2021. What we decide to organize in France is a campus on campus accommodation, lunches, and classes because I think we are all concerned about the situation, the sanitary situation, and we should keep everything as a bubble. So we rent in Biarritz a boarding school, a high quality boarding school that will allow us to organize all the uh, non-aquatic activities or most of the non-aquatic activities on site. We are speaking about the evening activities or the teaching activities, food and accommodation on those campus and all the transfers and all the, and all the transfer from the school to the activities doesn't matter if it's the surf or the multi-activities or multi-sport uh, activities will be organized with private transfers. That's one of the main uh, safety situations we want to explain and we want to organize. About the destination and Biarritz. Biarritz historically has a, a two stories on the city because the wife of Napoleon Bonaparte was from Biarritz. They used to go there for the summer and you have a lot of historical architectural and historical things around uh, Biarritz. And it was also a place for nobles and royalty. And uh, most of the nobles and the lords in England used to go during the First World War and on the between wars to Biarritz to have and to enjoy the sun. And then after the Second World War, Biarritz was the city where the first surfboard arrive to uh, Europe because the American, the US uh, militaries bring it to, to Biarritz. So it became the hotspot for surf in Europe and is still the hotspot uh, of surf in Biarritz. So this is the idea. Is a city very, very safe. Is a city very sportive. So you, you have a tourist who is based on sport, could be the surf, the bike, because you also have the mountain, it's quite close, compared to the tourists and the people you may found on La Côte d'Azur, who has another, another interest. This is about the destination. About the logistic, uh, Franzon has been organizing this summer camp for the last 10, 15 years. We used to have it on host families for the last three years who have been organizing it also on residence. So all the team is highly experienced, all the staff, everything is very well organized. Transfer from the Airwitz Airport, Bordeaux, San Sebastian and Bilbao are possible even from Paris if you want. However, I really recommend also to have the idea if you come from Europe by train, could be also a good option or any of those for uh, transfers. Regulations in France, I'm sure this is your main question or your main concern. So there is one very important thing. This summer program is planned from the 26th of June to middle of August. I'm pretty sure you all know, but on 1st of July, there's going to be the European Sanitary Pass that allows every European uh, citizen plus Swiss uh, Scandinavia and Vatican or Liechtenstein or those small countries to free travel on the European Union with a PCR, with a negative PCR within the last 72 hours. Considering that we are going to work with 
teenagers, there is no going to be any vaccination. So all the students from Europe will have free movement with a PCR. Perfecto, no problem. For all the people from outside the European Union, we will just need to adjust to this European regulation. I cannot confirm, but I'm pretty sure there is not going to be the, uh, anything else than these PCRs, except for very little countries where a self-isolation quarantine or self-isolation period of seven days will be asked. But we will prepare all this detailed information on two different dates. The first one will be the 9th of June, when France will launch the French sanitary pass, and we will give you much more details. And the second one will be just at the end of June, when the European sanitary pass will be public and confirmed. That's for the arrival. When we speak about coming back to the home country, Franzon has already coordinated and is already organizing that every Wednesday and Thursday, we will organize PCRs and antigen, I hope I pronounced it correctly, antigen test for each one of the kids leaving on Saturday. So we will be sure that everyone has a 72 hours PCR, negative PCR to come back home and we have no problems. As I say, the idea is to have a real bubble and the only people coming out and in of the bubble are going to be the teachers or the group leaders. So adults who will always have their mask on because we all know that for these teenagers, even if they are supposed to have the mask, they will not follow all the rules all the time. So on the sanitary place, everything is ready. And on the regulations, we will keep you updated. Remember, 9th of June and 1st of July, you will receive all the detailed information for the arrivals. But for Europe, there is, there is going to be not a single problem to travel from Spain, Italy, Germany, Switzerland, Portugal, whatever. I will take the same part to France. Thank you. Thank you very much, David. Well, that, it's, it's wonderful to hear that the borders are opening up and that travel um, throughout Europe is going to be so easy uh, this summer. So I think we're all looking forward to a little bit more freedom of movement. Um, so just a little bit more on the uh, English in France program, a couple of other bits and pieces. So just a little bit more detail uh, on the English language. So it's 20 lessons, which is 15 hours every week of English language tuition. So 20 lessons, 15 hours. Uh, and the English lessons are in the morning. And then the lessons, the surf lessons, it's four 90 minute surf lessons. So four 90 minute surf lessons or four 90 minute activities. Uh, and there are also excursions included. So uh, on the day when they are not having a surf lesson or an activity, then there is a local excursion to a, something, a, a beautiful place of interest. I think David can tell us in a minute where some of the excursions will go. Uh, and something very, very important for the children taking the surfing lesson, they do need to take a swimming test before they could do the surfing. Of course, this is for their safety. So don't forget to put your questions in the chat box as well. I can see some questions coming up here. Uh, and uh, David can answer the one about the PCR. Um, David, do you have anything to add about the excursions uh, or, or the activities, the sports activities that the children are doing in Biarritz? I, I mean, the south of France is very, very interesting for the cultural and architectural uh, history, but also for the nature side. Uh, most of the activities are organizing, are organized depending on the weather, because obviously if you have a wind from the west, it's much more difficult to do paddle, for example, and we will move to an on-site or a non-aquatic activity. So this may change compared to the official program. This is very important to consider the weather when you work or when, when you have activities on the water. Everything will always be under uh, professional supervision. 
our teachers are French teachers. They are not surf teachers. They are not paddle teachers. So we have professional people doing their own job. This is very important. Also about the ratios between uh, teachers and students. On the ground activities is gonna be one teacher or one adult for every 10 to 12. And on the water, we are working with one adult or one teacher for every six to eight students. Very important about the safety. The mm, uh, uh, level test of um, swimming, swimming level test is going to be taken by everyone. Because if you do paddle or you do any kind of aquatic, I really prefer that the students know how to swim in case they fall down of the paddle or the kayak, really. So that's, that's very important. We always organize the same thing. After you will have full day visit with a picnic organized outside the town to discover the, the beauty of the small towns around it. And maybe depending on the people and depending on the organization and the borders, we may even go to San Sebastian, who is on the Spanish side of the border. That's the idea. About the questions, I saw Marta asking about the PCR coming back. And today, yes, it will be included because it's free. The French government decide to give it to, uh, for free for everyone. But they are French, so they may decide in three weeks time that they're going to charge us. Once they are going to charge us, we're going to, we're going to pretty sure keep it included, except if they charge too much. But I'm 99% sure it's, it's included or it's going to be free. Adam. Hello, David. You say, Adam, Matthew, would I respond? would like to ask to this question, so please. Oh, no, 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 you, you've answered it. Sorry, it was just a <laughs> administrative thing. Okay. Uh, about the activities, also Marta Garcia Nobrejas, also, uh, yes, there is no problem. You can choose one week surfing and one week more activities. I can confirm you that we already have bookings on that side and on that style. Uh, Sophie Greco. Uh, for the moment, we are receiving some active, some uh, some good bookings, mainly Europe. Obviously, we have a lot of requests from outside Europe. And very important, we didn't mention, and Jane, you will allow to do me to do some publicity about my program, but we are doing on the same place a French and surf and French and multi-activity program. So on the residence, we will have the students for English, the students for French that are going to share uh, the campus and maybe mix it on the activities to have bilingual activities. So the teacher, however, on the surf, you are more concentrated on the board than on the teacher most of the time. But on all the activities, everything will be bilingual. So for everyone. So that means the nationality mix will be great because we will have uh, English native speakers learning English, learning French. At the same time, we will have French learning English and Spanish, for example, uh, learning French or learning English. So it's going to be a, a really nice meeting pot, speaking about Europe. From outside Europe, we have some quotation, but we are waiting to have the details about the borders. Sophie, uh, your course or course plus activities is going to be the day camp, what, uh, where Jane also gives some information. So yes, in case they can organize the accommodation or is a family coming, so no problem only course or course plus. I think it's course plus activity. Only course is not available. Yeah, I, I just come in on that. We, we can't, because, um, you know, even with the day camp, the kids are together all day, the interaction with each other, the learning things in English that aren't English language, these are all very important part of the programme. So uh, it, it is the course and the activities. We can't really differentiate and keep people just doing the course. That would be very complicated. Uh, but, you know, or ask if you have somebody who's really insistent, we will always look and, uh, and see and be as flexible as we can. So if you've got somebody that really, really, really just wants that, uh, we will do our best. But uh, to be honest, I think their child will probably be very unhappy if that happens because they'll be left out uh, of all the fun things. 
And just to clarify what David was saying about the activities being run in English or French, they're run in English and French. So there, there are staff and teachers, English speaking and French speaking. So the, it, the English language learning children will be uh, with English speaking leaders on the activities to make sure that they continue to practice uh, their English. So back to you, David, uh, for, for Shane. For Shane Fernando. Uh, here I want to make a joke and I have to say that because I'm Spanish, voy a poner una verita. I'm going to put a, a, I don't know how you, how you say una vera, this thing you put on the church. And not having one positive case during the course. In case we have one positive case during the course, it's going to be quite easy because we're going to have a hub with some, th with some tens of minors being contact case. So we're going to do an army of PCRs, do isolation, and, and block everyone on the residence. As we, that's why we decide to have it on a residence, because we have a, a single bubble. If we have one and every one and all the rest are negative, we have single rooms, so we will need to follow a seven days uh, isolation period with a PCR of the end of the seven days, inform the sanitary system in France and follow the indications. So the procedures are not Fonzong or Wimbledon procedures, they are state procedures. And you are welcome, Sophie. And finally, Marta, uh, no, we need the information in advance because we need to do the coordination and the bookings for all the activities. Each person or its kid doing surf is a booking for the surf school. So we cannot change on Monday morning from one side to another because all the activities has been organized at, in advance. So we need to know it in advance, basically. Thank you. I hope I answered all your questions. If you need any kind of more specific details, you can contact me. You can contact June, but I'm pretty sure is your main contact. And I stay at your uh, disposal if you need anything else. Thank you, David. Any, any more questions for David before we move on to the next section? So just double check, nothing, nothing more. Okay, well, there will be a, a time for questions right at the end as well for questions on all the other parts. Um, but if David has left us by then to, to carry on with his normal day, then we will do our best to answer the questions or you can contact David, you can contact June, you can get the answers to the questions on English in France. So as I said, we're all very excited about that. We're really looking forward to it. Everything is opening up. People are moving around much more. People are really feeling positive about going away in the summer uh, and having a great holiday. So thank you, David. And we will move on now thank um, you. Bye -bye. to Adam. Yes, indeed. So thank you very much, Jane. Thank you, David. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a new programme that we have uh, for juniors actually coming to Wimbledon and using our school here in Wimbledon, our lovely school with our lovely garden. Uh, so these are our details, um, starts on the 14th of June and ends on the 21st of August. All arrivals, all departures are on Sundays. This can be a little bit flexible, but uh, if you have any questions about this, then speak to June. June's email address will be at the end of this presentation. Uh, the ages that we're accepting are 12 to 17. We're going to actually charge a little supplement for the, for the younger kids because, um, so they will all be staying in homestays. And um, for the very young ones, for the 12 year olds and the 13 year olds, we want to make sure that they get to school safely, of course. Um, so we will be providing a member of staff to go and collect them in the mornings. Um, the slightly older kids are okay. Uh, all of our homestays are selected by Wimbledon School of English. We know them, we've worked with them for many years. Um, and they're all within a, a very short distance of the school. Most of them are within a, a maximum half an hour walking distance. Uh, so it's all very convenient for everybody. Um, 
as always levels so we don't normally take complete beginners but we do take very advanced uh, proficiency students and you can book these courses for up to from one to ten weeks uh, we are offering a sports option for this course um, professional tennis coaching which will be in Wimbledon Park Wimbledon Park is actually almost next to the Wimbledon uh, Law and Tennis Association you can't exactly see it but it's very very close and we will have professional tennis coaches if students wish uh, obviously there is a supplement to pay for that as well and <clears throat> moving on so the course looks like this uh, students have a choice of either general English or young leaders, especially for older and um, older students with a higher level of English. We very much recommend the young leaders. Young leaders, we, many of you will know what this is already. It looks very much about 21st century skills and all sorts of soft skills. Uh, and so we've built this course around these ideas. Uh, so that is that every morning and that's followed by a choice of our specialist skills workshops we have four to choose from junior journalist filmmaking and social media debating presentations and public speaking and for the older students university preparation and after that we have almost daily excursions into london and we also have evening activities either here in the school or we take the students out into the city and so <clears throat> Our day trips, so we will go to all sorts of different places in London, actually in a moment when I show you the timetable, then I will explain a little bit how we organise this, but as you can see, um, we are looking to some, uh, some of these will be paid, some of these will be free, um, free entrances, and we've got a very varied programme, so um, it repeats only every five weeks, so we have five different weeks, um, if students come for 10 weeks, then that's perfectly fine because they can, they can see these places again. The, uh, the museums and the art galleries are always interesting. We're also doing full day excursions. So our full day excursions will be going to Oxford or Cambridge or Brighton. And some of our activities, so our evening activities might include a disco or fashion show, uh, treasure hunt. We will definitely be going into London, as I say, and so one of the evening meals at least every week will be in uh, in a restaurant in London in a hard rock cafe or somewhere like this. So <clears throat> here is our sample timetable. As you can see, there are three lessons of general English or young leaders in the morning, followed by specialist skills workshops. Um, the idea of the afternoon excursions. So we have on the Mondays, a walking tour of some interesting part of London. On the Tuesdays is a visit to a museum. Wednesdays is a visit to an art gallery. And Fridays are visits to markets and things around the markets. I think um, if students wish, they can also go on an ex option excursions on the Sunday, or they can just relax at home with their host families. Uh, as you can see, so 14 lessons and four lessons of special skills workshops are a total of 15 hours of in-class study per week. Okay, as I've already mentioned, so our homestays are uh, hand-selected by um, Julie, who is our academic uh, accommodation officer, and she knows them. She's, many of them have been here for years with us, and the ones that we've selected for our juniors program all have experience with kids. Some of them have kids themselves. Some of them, maybe their kids are a little bit older and have already left the left home. But um, we we specially select these homestays for our juniors. And obviously, getting to London a little bit like David said, uh, we would always encourage people to come by train. It's not only not only is it more environmentally friendly, it's also the nicest way to arrive in London is into St Pancras. But um, all of the uh, airports are now opening up very quickly, actually. Um, and we can collect, we will collect students at certain times during the, uh, during that Sunday when they arrive. Um, obviously, we'll speak to June, speak to myself, and we will arrange all of the pickups with you. So a little bit about some of the regulations in the UK. Jane, can you come in here a little bit? 
Uh, yes, I will come in there. And just to clarify something that you said, Adam, about paid and free entries, everything is included. The course fees covers all the activities, all the excursions, uh, it's all included. So you've got two different options on the course fees. You can have the everything included and all the accommodation included, or if you've got um, children who are staying with friends or family uh, in, in Wimbledon, then there is the course and activities fee that is clear on the brochure and June can also help you if you have more queries about the fees. Um, so I'm sure you've heard about the traffic light system in the UK. Um, at the moment, unfortunately, most of the uh, most of the most of the vehicles are stuck on amber with the traffic light system um, and a few countries on red and not very many on green. So we are hoping that there will be more countries on the green list very soon. Uh, we think that there are several reasons why this will happen. First of all, uh, we, we, we feel that across Europe, COVID levels are decreasing and the European countries vaccination programs uh, are doing very well. So many, many people are getting their vaccinations. I'm sure you've heard that in the UK, uh, the vaccination program is amazing. I mean, I've had both my vaccinations. It's now everybody from 30 upwards are now getting their vaccinations. I mean, in the UK, the numbers are very low and the vaccination program is fantastic. So we're really happy about that. But uh, regarding coming into the UK, we are at the mercy of our government. And so far, we have not had any more announcements, but we're expecting another announcement at the beginning of June. So just to remind you of what the regulations are, um, if you are on the amber list, then unfortunately there is still some form of quarantine uh, and the test. So you have to, if you're on the amber list, you have to fill in the passenger locator form. Uh, you have to provide the negative test result before you travel, you have to quarantine, and then you have to take a test on day two and day eight. The quarantine, there are two options. There's the 10 day ordinary quarantine, or there's the five day test to release quarantine, where you can take uh, another test. So if you are on the green list, and this is what we're hoping, we're hoping that all our European friends at least will be on the green list very soon. The green list requires a passenger locator form. So that's the details that you fill in. Uh, and the negative test result taken in the 72 hours before you travel and another test on day two after your arrival. Now the tests after arrival are all organized by the government website. They have a list of qualified test providers. You register in country before you come for those tests, those tests are sent to you in your accommodation. So in the, we do have, as you know, for our adult students, we have quarantine options here in school. We have students happily staying in quarantine in our host families. Some of them are doing the test release, some aren't, uh, and they are joining the classes uh, in the hybrid manner. This is of course also possible for the children, but it would mean they had to stay in the host family for five days, they wouldn't be able to join the activities, uh, it, and but they could do the hybrid classes. So if you're really, really desperate, uh, that is possible. But we, what we really need is a green light for more countries. And this is what we're waiting for. So quarantine is possible. We have it all in place. We do do it here. Uh, so if you have children that want to come and do the quarantine, yes, they can. They can be in quarantine for five days with the test to release system. We do have a quarantine FAQs sheet. If you would like a copy of that, if you need to be reminded, please ask June because it's a lot of detail. I'm just telling you all this, you won't remember it all. It's a lot of detail, it's all there in the quarantine frequently asked question sheet and we can send that to you. June can send that to you to answer your questions on the quarantine. Um, so I think that is it yep. on the regulations. Uh, and obviously, uh, uh, if a child tests positive while they're here, we have our normal procedures in place that we've had ever since we first opened back in August last year uh, on 
what we do, the child is quarantined in the host family um, for the required number of days. I think, I believe it's 10 days still. I haven't read the procedures recently, I must admit. Uh, and we have, we have full procedures in place for that. Julie, our accommodation manager is in charge of that. She's also our welfare officer. She's very, very, very up to date on the regulations. Should the child fall ill just before coming home, we would of, of course keep the child here in quarantine in the homestay. Uh, but after the end of the course, you would be liable for the cost of the homestay accommodation. So that's just to fill you in on that. Thank you, Jane. Um, so, folks, we are going to have questions. Actually, we're going to do all of the English at WSE parts all together, and we will have questions at the end of that. We do have one specifically about this, however, which is from Vera asking how many students per homestay. Um, so that our prices are based on two students sharing a room, uh, twin rooms. Okay. Um, we would normally have a maximum in our homestays of four students. There is, it is possible also for the students to, to stay in single rooms if they wish. There's a small supplement. I believe it's £50 a week or something like that. Okay, we're going to move on to talk about our virtual summer camp, which is something that we started last year um, and was hugely successful last year. We had 30 different nationalities come to our virtual summer camp last year. Um, and so like it says, actually you make international friends, there's people from all over the world, but it's also this idea of get moving. We have actually movement incorporated into all parts of the day. And I will talk a little bit more about that as well. So the dates are the 14th of June until the 13th of August. Uh, you can start any Monday, actually, because this is an online course, it's possible, um, you know, there's, there's a lot less organisation that needs to take place. So it's possible to book the Wednesday or Thursday before the start of the course and start on the Monday. Um, it is, a, there's a large age range, eight to 17. We base these, uh, our classes are based on ability and ages. So we, we uh, vary the classes um, accordingly. Some of the, um, some of the activities I will show you in a moment, I will show you the, uh, the timetable, but some of our activities include everybody. Um, we're very careful with breakout rooms, for example, that the younger kids go together and the older kids go together, but actually uh, our experience of them all sharing the same activities was they all loved it. Uh, some of the really little kids that we had last year had amazingly good English. Uh, and it's possible to book anywhere from one to nine weeks. Uh, and again, it's possible to extend pretty much at the last minute for our junior summer, uh, our virtual summer camp. So these are the choices of the course. Again, there is general English or young leaders. And as for the course in Wimbledon itself, it's better if uh, students are over 14 and have a, a level of B2 or above, we would very much recommend that they do the Young Leaders course because it's based on using language in all sorts of different con uh, contexts, um, very much this focus on 21st century skills. Then after our morning classes, we have a new array of specialist skills workshops. So you may recognize the first three, but we are also now offering entrepreneurship life skills and language of sport and after that uh, every day we have fitness and cultural clubs there are also some excursions in there i will show you the timetable there we go and so as you can see there are two lessons every morning uh, of general english or young leaders followed by specialist skills workshops our um our fitness and cultural clubs do all sorts of things. So last year, for example, we had students recreating um, famous works of art or scenes from a movie. We have various dances and all sorts of different exercises that we use as well. Our guided tours might go to explore underground London or it might go to the Houses of Parliament or go and see all the Harry Potter sites in London. Um, we have quite a varied uh, mixture of guided tours and our Friday fun is much more relaxed. Often the students will play some music, they might do some a quiz or something like this. 
and this is then eight in total 10 lessons um, of general English or young leaders, eight hours and 20 minutes per week, and those five specialist skills workshops. Okay. So as I've already mentioned, I will give you uh, June's email address at the end of this presentation. And if you have any questions, you can email her. Uh, just come in there, Adam, sorry, Jay, on yes, the, um, uh, just a little bit more detail uh, on, on some of the courses that we're doing with the virtual summer camp and the juniors in Wimbledon. So I just want to say a bit more about young leaders, because personally, I love our young leaders course and the students have also loved the young leaders course. So, you know, we are really trying to equip the students with the skills that they need uh, for living in the current world. Uh, so there's, there's debate and discussion, there's a lot on, on confidence building, presentation skills, but also uh, critical thinking, you know, problem solving, but also the skills that we find when we have younger people coming to work with us, that is time management, prioritizing, participating in group discussions, uh, taking part in debates. And they do a lot of very sort of practical experience. They're learning through role plays, they're learning through case studies. Uh, uh, and of course, they're also practicing effective digital communication for a work environment, which is very different from the digital communication that I know they are all very good at in the home environment. So it really, really is a, a great course. And we've got that one both with the juniors in Wimbledon and with the virtual summer camp. Uh, and the other uh, two courses I just wanted to tell you a little bit more about, the skills workshop. So, uh, the life skills workshop, we are giving young people the tools they need to help them maintain good mental health, because we have all recognized uh, that in the pandemic, many, many people of all age groups have struggled uh, to, to cope with the situation. Uh, and for us in the UK, mental health has now become a very important part of everything that we do, and we do know here at Wimbledon because we've already been running our mindfulness courses. I'm not saying we're experts, but we do have a lot of advice on small changes you can make in your everyday routine just to give you a more positive um, effect. But also the life skills, we're looking at thinking globally, thinking about the environment, thinking about diversity, uh, and, and, and thinking about how we can make a better world going forward for everybody. And I think, you know, the, the teenagers really, really have great ideas on all of this and they enjoy discussing all of those. Uh, and then also looking at handling change because again, COVID has brought change for all of us. And we all know that change for everybody is one of the most difficult things, whether it's change at work or change at home, we all struggle a bit with change. So, so that I really love. Uh, as a skills workshop, the life skills. Uh, and the other one uh, is the entrepreneurship, uh, which again is equipping students, children uh, for the real world. So again, it's looking at some of the things um, are, are similar. So it's problem solving, but we're looking more at creativity, at innovation, what it takes to be an entrepreneur, um, aspects of entrepreneurship, aspects of leadership, what makes a good leader, time management, goal setting, using emotional intelligence to create better communication in the workplace. But of course, this is in the school as well. Uh, and also looking at real world business issues, post COVID, 21st century business issues. Ah, can't speak. So two really, really, really exciting courses. So I had to come in and just tell you um, a little bit more about those. I'll just hand back to Adam now on the summer program. Uh, the summer family program. We've also got some really, really lovely topics that we're looking at in the summer family program. So back to Adam for those. Thank you very much, Jane. Um, so these 21st century skills, we kind of base them there. They, they call it the four C's of 21st century skills, critical thinking, creativity, communication, and above all, collaboration. So working together with people and learning to work together uh, with people from different backgrounds. It's a very important skill that people need well, not just children is it uh and actually the little bit that i missed was i wanted to tell you about um some of the exercises that they do so you can see on our sample timetable that every morning starts with an assembly our assem this is for the virtual summer school and for the school here um our assemblies are a little chat but it's mostly brain gym 
So brain gym um, is a marvelous thing, which really gets you waking up in the mornings. It's all sorts of activities which involve crossing hemispheres of the brain in order to create connections in the brain that don't exist uh, and is great for, um, for being aware of things around you, actually. Um, I hosted these assemblies every, week, uh, every day last year and to see the change in the students from uh, uh, to ooh, wide awake within five minutes of doing some brain gym was really quite something. There we go. So I'm going to move on to our summer family program. Uh, this is really the idea of having a family holiday, but it's a different family holiday. Okay, the dates. 14th of June until the 20th of August. You start any Monday. Um, so children-wise, it's from 8 to 15. Uh, and there are all sorts of different home state options available. Um, <clears throat> levels as normal, uh, not complete beginners, but uh, proficiency students are welcome one to nine weeks. And the idea of this course is that adults study their choice, of course, while um, their kids who stay with them um, study with us in our family programme. <clears throat> now, uh, our family programme so is very much designed with slightly younger kids in mind, but designed to challenge those kids. So uh, every week is themed for our sum uh, summer family programme. Um, for example, we one of the weeks it will be an environment program um, where we look at both um, language around these things, but also very much practical ideas. So we would make our own toiletries, um, look at systems for ecosystem restoration, um, writing songs, going to organic farms, these sorts of things. Um, another week is theatre and drama where we incorporate our excursions to actually go to some theatres, of course, but we teach um, various dance moves and all sorts of uh, yoga and mindfulness. I mean, mindfulness is, is throughout all of our courses, but this is specifically um, aimed at children and aimed at people that want to take drama to a different level, really. Um, Another one of our themes is Spooky London, where students design monsters and uh, we found a really nice shop uh, called the Hoxton Street Monster Supplies, where um, they actually have everything, uh, their website's great, so you can have it in English or in zombie or in uh, vampire language, and then we use that in the class um, for students to come along and make up their own monster language. Uh, the idea of this is all, of course, it's language focused, but it's very much a kind of fun course for the kids. Um, another of our options for this is Art of London. So we would uh, look at um, various art techniques, a bit of spray painting, in fact, staple um, uh, using some of the techniques that Banksy uses and looking at um, some of his actual graffiti and creating some of this stuff. Here, this is uh, very much the idea of um, learning and using English through various projects and various fun projects very much. So I'm going to move on from the family programme. Do you want to Sorry, say anything just, else, Jane? Just coming in with a bit more on the, on the family programme, just to remind you of the logistics of the family programme. So the parents study the normal standard WSE, 24 lessons a week and the children study 20 lessons a week which is in the mornings and then have the excursions on the two afternoons a week so when their parents are studying in the afternoon the children are on the excursions so parents and children have three afternoons a week free to enjoy London to you know to enjoy their holiday and so on so so both are taken up with 24 lessons um, uh, a week and if you do have parents um, with children who are 16 and above that want to come, then we advise that the 16 year olds join our normal uh, standard classes uh, and our normal social activities, because we do have a lot of different social activities. So just coming in with that for you. Sorry, Adam. That's brilliant. Thank you very much, Jane. 
Um, I only have one more thing to tell you about, folks, and that is uh, we are actually running juniors programmes online uh, part time as well. So we have uh, Tuesday evenings. Um, these are all UK time. So I think it's five o'clock UK time that it starts. We're doing debating presentations of public speaking. This is a very popular specialist skills workshop. Um, and this is two lessons a week. Okay, so an hour and 40 minutes. Um, the same as they would do in the specialist skills workshops in, in the summer schools. So it's the idea of how you construct an argument and how you um, plan an effective presentation and how you make things look nice and time things and especially this building confidence in being able to speak in front of large groups of people is, is invaluable. Uh, so that is Tuesday evenings and we are also doing Saturday mornings and uh, our young leaders students are able to sign up for young leaders um, from home uh, and can do it every week and it's very much the same thing as Jane has already described so it's this very much we, we like the idea of students learning to thrive in the modern world and so much of it is about confidence it's all about these 21st century skills that I've already discussed um, and that is Saturday morning there are discounts available if students sign up for a certain period of time or if students take both of these courses then um, we have various different arrangements that you can take advantage of and so we uh, the very last slide actually i will show you the very last slide now <laughs> uh, so here is june's um, email address if you have any questions at all about any of this please send an email to june and she can then uh, decide who uh, who is the best person to answer, but she's the person in charge of sales for all of these junior programs. Thanks, Adam. I'm going to pass one of these questions straight to you because I know this is something you know a lot about. So, so Anne has asked about the online activities, for example, how you do the guided tours online, and you are an uh, online tour guide, so you can talk Anne through the online social activities for the uh, the online junior summer camp. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, we were quite, actually, there's a lot of possibilities of doing tours online. In fact, in many ways, there's more possibilities to do tours online than there are in person because you don't have to do all the walking. And so, uh, and we can use not just destinations, but concepts as well. Uh, and one of our... Um, Tours, for example, looks at some of the different people that live in London and looks at some of the food that's come into the city because of them and some of the music and where they came from and a little bit of history. So the tours are not just tours to places, the tours are also tours in history, in concepts. Uh, one of the very popular ones last year actually was um, a tour to a black hole. And so we did a, quite a lot of... I'm sorry, Adam, what do you mean by a tour to a, a black hole? <laughs> a tour to a black hole, so it was called Black Holes and Beyond. Uh, uh, it, it uses various animations to kind of explain what happens and how, what a black hole is, uh, how you would get there, what would happen if you fell into it, and it kind of opens up an all, all sorts of different questions from the students. So you went into outer space with your students? You went into outer space, yes. I mean, I, I, I have a master's degree in astrophysics, so that helped. But uh, <laughs> uh, yes, we did. So it, like I say, it's all kinds of concepts. Another one actually was a history of the Beatles. So all music. Uh, and these are different every week. Thanks, Adam. That sounds absolutely brilliant. So just looking at the Q and A, um, so we have a question about the platform that we're using. Now, I know we use Zoom, um, but I think, believe you use others such as Edmodo and so on to supplement. So Adam, if, again, Indeed. back to you. Exactly that. Exactly that. So our classes, platform for Marina. our classes are live, uh, live through Zoom. Okay, there's nothing is recorded. It's all actually done in class. Uh, really, this is a summer school, so it's not really homework. Uh, for these things it might be something a little bit more fun but we don't we don't set homework we do however share work through Edmodo as Jane has said and um, they are the two main platforms we can do most things with that I mean we in the school itself in the main adult school we never stopped so during lockdown when lockdown happened 
uh, in March last year, we went straight from the Friday, we were in the school and the Monday we were online. So we have a great deal of experience of teaching online, both of the kids from doing the summer schools and, and adults. So we're always actually using, um, learning different techniques. Um, one thing that we're working on at the moment, it's possible to use Google documents, for example, to have a collaborative um, writing project and you don't need to share any uh, IDs um, obviously, with kids online, safeguarding is always at the front of our minds. I mean, with kids anyway, safeguarding is at the front of our minds, but especially when they're online. And so we don't want them to, all of the same rules apply. We don't want them to be sharing contact details. They don't want them to be, um, for other people to have the opportunity to speak to our kids. We keep, we make sure that it's only our kids in the, in the meetings we do before they sign up or when they sign up, we do um, speaking assessments to make sure that this is a child that we're talking to and not an adult. So we're very, very careful with all sorts of things. So I'm just coming in there. Hi Delia, nice to see you. Question there about a number of students in the host family uh, and whether we can have more than one. If the two students are starting at the same time, such as, um, for the juniors summer program with the students going into the twin rooms, we would put them in starting at the same time. Yes, we can, because the students are part of the household. So those two students enter the household and then they become part of that household. So that, you know, that in, in terms of the COVID restrictions, it is one household. So the host family and the two students. Um, what Adam was saying earlier about up to four host families, that's in normal life. That's not, that's not current COVID times at the moment. But yeah, we can pop those two in together. And Marina, yes, we are recording today's presentation and we'll be sharing it. I'm not sure if we can do it. In, Adam can also send you the PDFs. Uh, and Anne, we can send you the um, information on the summer virtual program. It is on the website. Greg, are you in there? Are you listening? If, if you can actually post the link in the chat, Greg. I'm not sure if Greg's in there listening. That would be great because it is on the, on the website uh, and it's worrying that you can't actually find it because that means it's not that easy to find. Uh, Olga, you are just asking about the quarantine. June, you said you wanted to answer that. Do you want to answer about the quarantine regulations or do you want me to answer about that in the host families? You're on mute, June. I can't hear you. Right, well, Jane is stuck on mute, so I will answer. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. sorry, that. sorry about that. <laughs> I'm trying to find the links on the website, sorry. <laughs> okay, you, you have a look for the links uh, and post those in the chat for the links to the virtual summer camp. Um, just about the quarantine, Olga. Uh, yes, what we do is that in the host family, uh, they, they, they um, stay in their room, they have meals delivered to their room, they have three meals a day from the host family, uh, but if the family is out, they are able to exercise in the garden, if the host family has a garden. Uh, and most of our students choose the test to release option, which means they are actually only in the homestay for five days. Uh, and again, I think we have a, a, a sheet with more information on that that we can send you. Uh, and we, we've had students all the way through doing quarantine with us and they join the classes in the main school in a hybrid manner and they really like that because when they come in they already know their classmates because they've all met and they've met virtually and they've been taking part in everything so what have um, we got? jane i think i'll just show everybody where to find yeah. this information on the website okay that's great thanks adam um, so here is our lovely new website and this arrow here for juniors so we have, uh, for example, our virtual summer, uh, it's cut a little bit off, definitely, but this one here, the virtual summer camp is where you can find more of that information, uh, including the fees, of course, um, and a lot of the things that we've just talked about, but there's more in there as well. So uh, juniors at WSC, which we talked about too. Um, you can get all of this information through our website. If you can't find anything, then uh, same again, you can email June, you can email me. I mean, my email address is the same. It's just Adam and not June at the front of it. I've posted a couple of uh, web, you know, the virtual 
web uh, summer camp and also about the COVID questions. There's all those frequently asked questions on that as well. Brilliant. Thank you, Jean. Uh, we have a question Jean, about... Jean's on mute. Sorry, sorry. I was on mute. Adam, go ahead. If you're answering a question, please go ahead. Well, we have the question about um, the vaccination of host families, which is an interesting question. Uh, most people, so most of our host families are over 50 and pretty much all over 50 year olds in the UK have been vaccinated, have had two vaccinations now. Um, we are, the, the country is now looking at sort of younger people, but they're, they're not normally our homestays game. So yeah, they're just coming in. As I said, that everybody is being vaccinated now from 30. Uh, so my daughter, her boyfriend, etc. They're all getting their first their first vaccinations. Um, uh, everybody over 50 has now had two. Uh, you know, if you're particularly anxious about having a vaccinated host family, then tell us and we can find a vaccinated host family. Because here in in London, in you know, in in, the, in this area, everybody's desperate to get vaccinated. Everybody I know has been vaccinated. You know, we we don't have many anti-vaccine people in Southwest London. I have to say that we're just also keen to be vaccinated and to be able to be free in our lives. But uh, if if that's an issue for you, do ask. Um, Olga was asking Adam activities in the family inside. Is that for the quarantine? Um, is, is that for the quarantine child? Uh, I presume activities in the family inside. I, I mean, I believe that they are allowed, you know, they, they do leave their room, they do move around the house, they do go into the sitting room, they do go into the garden, but they cannot actually leave the house. Uh, but the, the, we don't organise activities for them, but they have the online activities that they can follow. Yes, because we've, we, we have our online courses running now all the time. So we have a large selection of online courses running now, uh, which includes our online social program, which Adam, who does everything because he's Superman, <laughs> Adam organises our online social program. So yes, they do have activities uh, that they can join every week. Adam, remind me, what are some of the things you're doing in the online social program? Uh, we are doing, so there's always um, a language cafe, which is like a conversation club, basically. Um, we have done uh, students playing their own music from their own country and, and discussing it. We have done all sorts of different quizzes and games. There's a very nice one called Wikilinks, where you have to find a link from one Wikipedia page to another, just going through all the links within the Wikipedia pages. Um, yeah, we've been doing them every day pretty much for the last year. So there's a, we have a huge variety. Um, yeah. Most of those are aimed at adults, okay. Um, but of course, the junior summer camp is ongoing at throughout the summer, um, and the they have and they have activities that are aimed for kids, aimed at kids. So yes, so any child that was quarantined could join the junior summer camp activities. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other thing we would do was if we did have a child who was quarantined, then if uh, Adam say is on a tour up in London. Uh, he will do it virtually. He will be. Will have his phone on, so he'll be relaying the tour back to the back to the child in their bedroom as well, so yep. they can choose to do that as well. Yep. So yep. we're doing. We do everything we can to bring the outside in, uh, and yes, we've been doing it now for fourteen months, so <laughs> we're quite experienced at it. Just checking the questions. Are there any more questions that we've missed? So we will send. We will send uh, a recording, a link to a recording of this to everybody. But yes, uh, we will also send the actually the presentation slides out to everybody, but they don't have quite so much detail. Uh, and then we'll also send the links to the website on all the different aspects that we've been talking about. So I, I, I think you will see that what we're trying to do with all our summer programmes is make sure that whatever happens with COVID, there is something that young people can do with Wimbledon School of English and young people and their parents. So there is the English in France option, which whether or not the UK is open or closed is a great option because it's good weather, it's by the sea, it's WSE teaching standards, it's surfing, which we don't have in Wimbledon. I'm in Wimbledon is great, but surfing isn't on our list. It's surfing, or if you don't want surfing, it's sailing 
paddle boarding, cycling, kayaking, peloton, that's the name, I couldn't remember earlier, the special Basque country uh, sports, etc. So that is a wonderful activity, whether you want to go on holiday as a family and have your children there, or your children want to go away to a summer camp. That is really good. And France Long, we've known them for years, with fellow members of EELC, they are another very, very high quality organization and, and we know each other very well. So we have absolute confidence as well uh, in everything that they're doing with their team. So that is great for people in Europe who can travel around and possibly people outside Europe might be able to access France more easily than the UK. Again, we don't know at the moment. So we all want the UK to open its borders. We're desperate for that. For that, we have juniors in Wimbledon. So everything that you know and love about Wimbledon School of English, we're all still here, as you can see. Uh, we still have our excellent host families. As you know, over the years, we've won prizes for our host families. We only use our own host families. We never use an agent's agency. We've got Julie, who is terrifying, in charge of the homestays, making sure that everything is great in the host family. And we know these host families really well. They are near the school. The children can come to the school really easy. The younger ones will be supervised coming into school. Uh, and we make sure that they all will be near the school and near each other. Plus, you know, a really, really fun activity. London is open. Everything in London is open now. And it's, it's marvellous. You know, I'm booking all my exhibitions. I'm going to the theatre soon. All these things are happening. Really, really exciting. So, uh, you know, and, and I feel very, very safe myself traveling around London on public transport. Even before I had the vaccines, I felt safe. They have really, really good hygiene protocols everywhere in London. And of course, we do in the school. So, you know, for, for, the, um, for the children that want to come to the UK, that's a wonderful option. So for those that can't travel, the online summer camp is also really, we've done everything we can to bring the English and the activities and all the other things we do to you. So all the training that we're doing with juniors, with teenagers at the moment, Adam was talking about the, the brain gym. Uh, this, is, this is part of our mindfulness program um, when we're looking at uh, neuro channels in the brain and other things, you know, we're, we're working on all these things to open up our minds to everything. And this is something we feel passionately about at Wimbledon for young people uh, and to equip them and the world for the future. And finally, Again, if you can come to the UK, the family programme is a wonderful programme because London is still one of the most exciting cities in the world. Wimbledon is still a really lovely, green, leafy, rich area and a really, really nice place to be. So we hope to see you, you yourselves. That would be lovely. Come and see us. Delia, pop in. You're just down the road. Uh, we hope to see you or if we can't see you, we very, very much hope to see your students at one of our locations all virtually this summer. So thank you very much for attending uh, and we will see you soon. And the weather's bright. Yes. Anatoly. Hello, okay. Anatoly. <laughs> all right then, bye <laughs> Any questions, just send me an email. Brilliant. Thanks everybody, bye. bye. bye.